money control policy next india's g20 presidency thank you very much uh, mr kant and a very warm welcome to all of you i know it's been a very very hectic morning for you and a hectic year it's been a momentous year for india uh, you know when you look back what would you say has been your most memorable and your most favorite thing that's emerged from this presidency well i won't say most memorable but i would say the toughest uh, uh, moments are uh, negotiating the leaders declaration because you have uh, uh, 20 g20 countries plus 9 invitee countries all these countries are different stages of their growth they have different national circumstances they negotiated every single word so we started about 2 o'clock in the afternoon we end up at 2 2 pm in the night every word is fought for and the challenge for a sherpa is to tell them that look at where we'll take the world for you know in the next 20 25 years and drive climate action drive sustainable development goals drive technological transformation keep the big picture in mind but uh, there are huge huge challenges so it's been a very very tough year it's been a tough year it not only for us as a country globally because you know there was a war going on you have this whole china factor that's playing out uh in you know you how did you manage in terms of just getting all stakeholders on board uh and how confident are you that we will have some some conclusions and some communicate coming out of the uh, meet that's scheduled for September 9th and 10th yeah so uh, you know the key is that um Uh, one is that india has done its presidency very differently unlike doing it in one city or two cities we've taken it all over india the prime minister's vision was that uh, we should take it to all the states we've done it in 60 cities of india we've transformed these cities number two we made it a people's presidency so that everybody uh, participated it in some manner or the other the third is that uh, our priorities are very important for the world the fourth is that we have emerged as the voice of the global south right the prime minister started the g20 by holding a voice of the global south summit and throughout our uh, dis- discussions and our deliberations the focus on the developing south has been very important because 80% of the growth is coming from global south two third of the growth is going to come from a uh, global south in the next two decades and therefore resources should flow into global south so our focus has totally been on global south so mr kant i want to ask you you know uh, make in india is big for us atmanirbhata is big for us but we're also operating in a world that is looking inwards increasingly there is rise of trade barriers tariff barriers and so on so how does india as a country walk the the that tight rope walk you know how do you do the balancing act between protecting your own interests and yet emerging as the voice of the global south uh so shweta this is a very uh, interesting question because if you look at it historically after every pandemic every pandemic there is about 5 to 6 years of protectionism in the world uh america is doing it china is doing it many other countries are doing it right now i am a great believer in free trade i am a great believer that uh free trade lifts people above the poverty line india believes in free trade in some of these areas india has to fire on manufacturing it has to fire on agriculture productivity it has to fire on urbanization and along with services and therefore when you focus on manufacturing you will have to adopt some policies where you can get the size and scale that's how we brought in the production linked incentive so some policies so that manufacturing can take off to large scale size and scale is necessary that's how america is doing the inflation reduction act right now it's a highly protective policy but overall the policy of india is quite mar- market oriented we are believers in free trade we are pushing for free trade in one or two areas where make in india is important we will push for schemes like production linked incentive so that which is linked to production which is only linked to production so that you can make large companies grow bigger and bigger and bigger so hardware it hardware prominently features in that list is that the reason why we've seen tariff barriers coming up for on import of uh, laptops and pcs so uh, 
in some areas these issues are coming up i think it's uh, will be appropriate to understand the specifics of that and that is that in its quest for becoming a manufacturing nation the challenge is not about getting them from uh, other parts of the world some of these constraints are coming in because technology etc requires to work with trustworthy partners so the issue of trust comes in in some of these areas especially it and hardware and that is why in some areas uh, uh, you know we have imposed some restrictions uh, it's for the government to decide and take them sure uh, how close are we uh, you know in terms of deciding the key discussion points for the uh, G20 meet that's happening in New Delhi on September 9th and 10th. So we have uh, been doing round the clock negotiations. Our key priorities are uh, basically strong, sustainable, inclusive growth for the world because one third of the world is in recession. Germany has just gone into recession. Our priority is sustainable development goals, lifting people above the poverty line uh, because of COVID. Uh, the world instead of progressing as regress we need to accelerate the pace of education health nutrition our priority is uh, climate action and climate finance our priority is restructuring redesigning multilateral institutions so that more resources can flow in to for climate change and sdg and our priority is women led development in a very big way uh, that is pm's priority that women's empowerment and gender equality is very critical to growth in the long run uh, technological transformation and digital public infrastructure is again a big emphasis for us how to use digital public infrastructure uh, to uh, provide identity to 4 billion people of the world bank accounts to 3 billion people of the world and fast payment to 133 countries of the world the indian model of dpi is ideally suited for that right I wanted to zoom out a little bit post this presidency. How do you see India standing in the world and what is the new global order looking like? Uh, so post the presidency two things will be very clear. One is that India will be a very very key player as far as global growth is concerned because uh, we are the fifth largest economy by 2027 we'll be the third largest economy in the world number two our voice will carry a lot of weight globally because we've been able to bring uh, agreement on a range of developmental ambitious issues for the world Th number three our voice will be the voice of the global south that is important fourthly india will emerge as a major technological leader driving both what you have seen during Chandrayaan uh, where India has emerged as a space leader and through the digital public infrastructure. We are going to see growth for the next three decades of India's story. That's, that's very, very optimistic and I love that view. Uh, in fact, at Money Control, we've started a campaign called MC Bullish on India. Uh, my final question, I know you have to leave. Uh, I want you to just uh, tell our audiences here on the sectors that you are personally bullish on that you think will be driving India's growth? Well, I've been a long-term believer that there are, there's a paradigm shift taking place in the world. Uh, firstly, all companies which are going digital in a big way, there's a digital transition taking place in the world in a very big way. Secondly, there's an energy transition taking place in the world. The world is moving from fossil fuel uh, to cleaner forms of fuels like renewables and clean energy. Uh, number three, I think it's uh, very, very important to get into sunrise areas of growth. To my mind, the sunrise areas of growth are electric mobility, uh, they are uh, green hydrogen, uh, they are all areas of digital transformation uh, and to my mind, battery storage will be a very key area in the years to come. I also feel that uh, India will make a quantum jump in a mobile telephony manufacturing because of the policy framework. And therefore, I am a great believer that these areas are important, uh, but Indian banking is right now a very, you know, the twin balance sheet problem has been totally, uh, uh, you know, 
done away with. India's banks have very good balance sheet. India's corporates have very good balance sheet. And I think what you will see now is the golden period of India's growth with more and more private sector investment coming in uh, to drive India's growth trajectory in the coming years. Okay. We do have five to seven minutes, so I will continue asking my questions. Uh, you know, Mr. Kant, you've written a wonderful book, Make in India, and you've been a big proponent of uh, building domestic capacities. Also, India has been working on cutting red tape and making it easier to do business in India. As part of this G20 presidency, how higher up is this in the priority of India to actually simplify and incentivize businesses to come and set shop in India, especially when it comes to cutting the regulatory red tape? So India has done a huge amount of uh, uh, transformation. It brought in the goods and services tax, replacing 28 different taxes and cesses. It has brought in the insolvency bankruptcy code. It has brought in the Real Estate Regulation Act. It has brought down the corporate tax to international levels and redefined uh, MSMEs, which was pending for about 30 years. So these are radical reforms. And India has, uh, you know, made massive changes in... Uh, ease of doing business at the central level. Uh, it has done away with 1500 laws. It has set the ground, the groundwork for uh, big growth. You know, the digitization and the reforms are huge in India. And that's why I'm very bullish on India. My belief is that this similar kind of reforms must be carried out by every single state of India. States have to emerge as a big driver of growth in the coming years. And if you have about 10 states growing at 10% plus, then India will grow at 10%. The second key challenge to my mind is that India cannot grow on one sector that services alone. India must become a manufacturing nation to create jobs. India's agriculture productivity must increase. And India must have sustained, uh, sustainable urbanization. Because we'll see a lot of people moving from rural areas to urban areas. And sustainable urbanization is very, very critical for India. Uh, I want to talk to you about climate financing. Uh, that's my last question, uh, yeah. I promise. Yeah. Climate financing. Uh, what is the sense that you've gotten when it uh, comes to, you know, uh, capacities and capabilities and interests within India and across the world in terms of uh, yeah. funding sustainable so we businesses? Have, we have worked out that based on uh, both the requirement of... Uh, uh, global South, developing countries, emerging markets, the total requirement uh, for SDGs and climate, which are both two sides of the same coin, is about 5 trillion. Uh, the world has enough resources. Uh, total amount of investable surplus available in the world is 350 trillion. Invest pension funds, uh, sovereign wealth funds themselves have about close to 150 trillion. 150 trillion. So 350 trillion is available, 150 trillion with uh, pension funds uh, and uh, sovereign wealth funds, etc. Now, you need that to flow to Global South. Global South has more risk and therefore multilateral financial institutions should use their balance sheet to do indirect lending. They should do blended finance. They should do uh, credit enhancement. They should do first loss guarantees so that more and more resources flow to the global south. That will be good for the world because 80% growth is going to come from the global south. There is young population in these countries. That is the future of the world. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Thank Khan. You. I know it's been a busy day. Money Control Policy Next. India's G20 Presidency.